So at the moment we are talking about the uh, signal plus noise uh, model where we have a uh, yeah, Wishart matrix, uh, let's say with a covariance which is identity, but then, but then we perturb this by one uh, by, by a rank one deformation. Eh? And we want to see whether for large n we can see the, the effect of this deformation in the spectrum of, of the matrix. Eh? And uh, so what we want to prove, or may maybe uh, let's say, so what we consider is uh, we have a, yeah, we, we are looking on our Wichert matrices where the covariance is given essentially by the identity matrix, but then we do a rank one perturbation. You you transpose. Huh? So, so there is a spe specific uh, eigenvalue, uh, 1 plus mu, and u is, is the eigen, eigenvector for this. And mu is a positive number. Huh? Okay, huh? So, so this is a rank 1 deformation of the Machenko Pasteur situation. And we want to see uh, whether the largest eigenvalue uh, of this corresponding uh, Wichert matrix. Uh, can be seen. Uh, so it should be something which pops out of the spectrum of the v of, of the Machenko Pasteur. Uh, and if mu is large enough, it should be visible. If mu is too small, it will just be buried in the in the spectrum of Machenko Pasteur. Uh, okay. And so the statement is uh, that if I'm looking on the maximal eigenvalue of sigma hat uh, for this situation, uh, so I'm taking uh, yeah n independent copies of Gaussian vectors. And the Gaussian vectors have a covariance matrix given by this. And of course, we are looking in, in the regime where p and n go to infinity with the same speed. So namely, their ratio is fixed, fixed to be a gamma. And this gamma, in our setting, we say is between 0 and 1. Uh, so, so we are looking on the situation where p divided by n goes to gamma, and gamma is between 0 and 1. And then the maximal eigenvalue of this guy, so it can be seen if mu is big enough, and how big does it have to be? It has to be bigger than the square root of gamma. Uh, and then we can really say what it is. It's 1 plus mu plus gamma times 1 plus mu divided by mu. And otherwise, if mu is smaller than this gamma, then essentially if mu is equal to the square root of gamma, then this maximal guy will exactly hit the, uh, the border yeah, the, the maximal eigenvalue of Machenko Pasteur, and, uh, and then after this it will just disappear. Uh, so then the maximal eigenvalue is just the same of uh, Machenko Pasteur, which is gamma plus, which was 1 plus the square root of gamma squared. Uh, okay, so this means in this situation we don't see the spike anymore, but if mu is bigger than this, we see one extra eigenvalue at this position. Uh, and so this tells us that in the underlying model there should also be something like this. Good, okay, so we started to prove this, and yeah, we proved this by essentially looking on the characteristic equation. Huh? So, so namely by saying that the determinant of our matrix uh, minus lambda identity should be zero, and then we try to solve this. Of course, in general, for our big matrices, this is hopeless to look on this equation. That's not what we did when we proved Machenko Pasteur, because I mean we have uh, p eigenvalues and we cannot control this. Uh, but because we have here rank one deformation, we try to isolate the effect of this rank one, and the rest is essentially Machenko Pasteur uh, information which we already have. Uh, okay, so what we did was, of course, essentially we tried to reduce uh, questions about this Wichert matrix here to the one about Machenko Pasteur the one which goes with the identity covariance. Uh, so we wrote uh, essentially our, uh, our vectors x, which have this uh, covariance as a sigma to the one minus 1 times y. And y is now the ordinary Machenko Pasteur or the, the Wichert matrices, where all the entries have the same, uh, the same variance. Uh, they are all independent, and they all have the, the, the variance 1. Okay, and here, of course, one of the variances is, is changed to 1 plus mu. Uh, okay, but this means we can reduce, essentially, uh, information about x to information about y. Uh, so we, we try to get in the direction of y uh, as much as possible. And so in principle, I mean, what we want to solve is that the determinant of our Wichert matrix, and this is the one with x, so this is 
1 over n x x transpose minus lambda times the identity p is equal to zero and we want to find this a special lambda of course this is a p by p matrix so this has p eigenvalues but only one of them is a special one which should be bigger than uh, this gamma plus uh, so we want to see whether we find one of them and for this we rewrote this in terms of 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 y and then, of course, we had some factorizations, and some of the factors we see, they, they could not be zero, so we, we could specialize on the one which has to be zero. And so maybe in the end, uh, yeah, we arrived essentially at yeah, a condition like this after some calculations and using some nice uh, matrix tricks uh, that essentially what we have to solve is that zero so it's still a determinant but we have uh, yeah, massaged this a little bit so that essentially uh, we have something uh, in the y and so namely we have the determinant of yp plus and then we had lambda divided by mu a lambda times mu divided by one plus mu and then we had here now uh, not the x but the y so we had one divided by n y y transpose minus lambda identity and we had here the resolvent of this guy so this to the minus one uh, and u u t uh, so that was uh, one step in our calculation uh, so I mean here the perturbation shows up uh, and here this is now the the resolvent of the unperturbed thing okay in this uh, way it's still a p times t p matrix of which we took the take the determinant but then we did this Sylvester's identity trick that essentially we have here a product of a p times one matrix with a one times p matrix which we multiplied in this order gives a p times p matrix but this Sylvester identity determinant identity tells us that I have I the de determinant of a identity plus a times b that this is actually the same as a determinant of one plus b times a huh? so I can just multiply this in the other way and it is the same so this here and that's where we stopped essentially last time so this is the same as the determinant of one plus lambda mu divided by one plus mu and now I multiply here uh, yeah, I, sh I changed this. So first I take here ut, and then I take this here to the minus one, and then I take u. Okay, yeah, and there are now two nice things to observe. I mean, first of all, this is now just the determinant of a one by one matrix, which is just the number which we have here. Uh, and actually, this guy here, this is something which we more or less uh, know. Uh, so this is. I mean, of course, this is the inner product of of this operator uh, with, with those two vectors here. So this is the same as u, comma, and I mean, this was 1 over n y y transpose minus lambda identity. So this is a p times p matrix acting on u. Uh, so this is this inner product. Uh, and now, of course, you see that what I have here, this is the resolvent of my Machenko Pasteur of my my Wishart matrix for the identity covariance, uh, and if I take the trace of this, this is exactly the Steeldes transform, which we understand if n is large. Huh? Okay, and now we, we are not taking the trace, but we take the inner product with a vector. Uh, but if you think a little bit, I mean the trace is the sum over guys of this form where I'm summing over an orthonormal system, uh, and because uh, if the covariance matrix is the identity everything is invariant under rotation so it shouldn't make a difference which vector I take here huh? so all vectors should give me the same result for this huh? so if I take the sum then it's just uh, p times uh, the result so this means this here is actually also just the Steeltis transform hmm? uh, so this here is more or less close if n is large and in the limit it goes to the Steeltis transform at this guy here at the argument s von lambda uh, so where this here is the steeltis transform of the of this matrix here uh, which is the Wichert matrix with the identity covariance and we know that the limit distribution of this is Machenko Pasteur uh, for which we had a, a precise formula 
and even more maybe even more important we had an equation for for this guy here huh? okay so this is uh, the stages transform of the Machenko Pasteur uh, distribution uh, of of y y transpose divided by one over n. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Good. Uh, okay. So so this means I mean maybe this is, this is the point. I mean the Stilis transform was the trace of the resolvent and of course taking expectations. Uh, but expectations are close. Well, although I mean. Uh, general values are close to the expectation uh, so we can take the expectation if you like at various points or we can just omit them because it's more or less the same by concentration uh, but so the still this transform is a trace of this guy uh, so this means I have a I have my P so this is a P, P by P matrix and then we say if I take the inverse of this and take the trace then this is more or less the still this transform uh, but now I'm saying actually more, namely, if I take the inverse of this P by P matrix, this essentially, I mean, this is still a P by P matrix, but uh, the entries, at least the, the ones on the diagonal, they are all the same. They are all the Stiltis transform. And actually, if, if you think a little bit more, the ones off diagonals are actually all close to zero. Uh, so, so essentially, we, yeah, we could refine what we did before by saying that I don't have to take the trace, but I even know that the that the resolvent is uh, is very close to Stiles transform times identity. Uh, okay, so here we don't bother about the off-diagonal elements, but at least it's good to see that on the diagonal we have all the same guys. But this is just because everything is is rotational invariant. Uh, so it doesn't matter which vector I take here. I should always get the same. And because the trace is the sum over guys like this, and they are all the same, this means the trace must be equal to any of those guys. Good. Okay. Yeah. So that's uh, the crucial thing, that now what I have here is the determinant of this number, which just means it is this number. Uh, so this is 1 plus this times the Stiltis transform. This should be equal to 0. This is now our equation for lambda. So that's our condition. And now we just have to see uh, yeah, whether we can solve this. And because we know the steel is transform, we have enough information for really doing this. So does our condition on lambda is that zero should be exactly what I have in this determinant, because it's just a one by one matrix, so it's one plus <coughs> lambda mu divided by one plus mu s of lambda. Okay, uh, so this is an equation. Uh, mu is given, and I have to check whether I have a solution for lambda. In particular, I want a solution uh, which is bigger than this 1 plus square root of gamma squared. Uh, that's what I want to check, when, when a solution there exists. Uh, okay, and so in principle, yeah, I mean it's, it's, it's an equation for... Yeah, it involves S of lambda. And in principle, we can say, okay, S of lambda was the Stiltis transform. We had an explicit formula for this. So in principle, we could check whether we have a solution for this. Uh, okay, but maybe I, <coughs> I want to do it in the following in a way that actually we should look on the equation which is satisfied by S of lambda, not on the solution. Uh, so very often, it's better to use the equation than the solution for getting information. And in particular, here we see, I mean, we have to solve for lambda, but actually what shows up in the solution is lambda times s of lambda. Huh? So maybe, so what I want is a lambda such that lambda times s of lambda is minus 1 plus mu divided by mu. Huh? So I'm just, I mean, I just take this, this guy here and isolate this. Huh? So this equation is this. So this means uh, I should maybe not look for the solution of s of lambda, but for lambda times s of lambda. And mayb maybe the equation which I have for S of lambda, I can massage it in such a way that it tells me right away what this guy here is. Uh, okay, so let us look back. So, <coughs> so we had our equation for the Stiltis transform of Machenko Pasteur. Uh, so this was the following. So that was 1 plus lambda S of lambda. Ah, this looks good. Here I have lambda S of lambda. But on the other side, I have S of lambda divided by 1 plus gamma 
s of lambda. Oh, okay, so in this form, it's not an equation which tells me what lambda times s of lambda uh, is, depending on, yeah, on gamma. Good, okay, but maybe I can also write this here as, I divide here by s of lambda, as 1 divided by 1 divided by s of lambda plus gamma. <coughs> and now, maybe let me, yeah, let me write this here down, just as a yeah, quadratic equation. I mean, this is a quadratic equation for s of lambda. So let me write it down. So I multiply with this. So I have 1 plus gamma s of lambda. Then I multiply this with this. So I get also lambda times s of gamma. And I get plus uh, gamma lambda s of lambda squared. Uh, and this is, what is this? This is s of lambda. Okay, just writing it down again. And now let me write this in the following form. So I'm getting, trying to get out S of lambda. Uh, so all the terms which have an S of lambda I bring on this side and only this one which doesn't have an S of lambda I bring on the other. So I have here this S of lambda. On this side it's a minus one. Then I have here, or may maybe I put the minus here. And then I have here a plus. No, actually, yeah, you see, I'm doing such things that, okay. It's not clear what you should do unless you really are told what you should do. So let me write it again. Minus S of lambda, 1 minus lambda minus gamma lambda S of lambda. Good. Okay, so this... This is this term, this is this term, so I keep the quadratic term here. This guy here, this is actually this brought to the other side. And then I still have two terms which I bring to the other side. So this is equal minus gamma S of lambda minus 1. Okay, yeah, and now I divide by S of lambda. Um, um, um. So I divide by this, so I have 1 minus lambda minus gamma lambda S of lambda. Um, this is equal to, um, and I divide it by minus, so the minus signs go away. And I have here uh, gamma plus 1 divided by S of lambda. Okay, this doesn't look maybe much better than before because, I mean, I still have not, not just combinations of lambda times S of lambda, but now you see this guy here, this is exactly what I have here, so I can use my original equation again and replace it by this, which only contains lambda times S of lambda. And here I also have lambda times S of lambda. Okay, so this... So this here, by the above, is uh, this is 1 divided by the other side by 1 plus lambda S of lambda. Or if I take the, so I have this is equal to this, or if I take the reciprocal, so this means that I have 1 plus lambda S of lambda is equal to 1 divided by this, which is 1 minus lambda minus gamma lambda times S of lambda. Okay, now you see that this is now something that the S of lambda only appears in a combination lambda times S of lambda, and so I can solve this for lambda times S of lambda. Uh, and now e lambda times S of lambda, this should be minus 1 plus mu divided by mu. Oh, okay, so this is now an equation uh, where I can plug in uh, what I really want, namely that lambda times S of lambda is given in terms of mu. <coughs> with lambda, S of lambda is equal to minus 1 plus mu divided by mu. That's the equation which we have to solve. We have to find a lambda which satisfies this equation, but lambda times S of lambda sa satisfies this equation, and I can now plug in this, this thing here. Uh, so what I get is that I have here 1, 
And then for this, I'm plugging in the minus 1 plus mu divided by mu. This has to be equal 1 divided by 1 minus lambda minus gamma. And lambda times S of lambda is again uh, this 1 plus mu divided by mu. And actually this minus becomes a plus because I also have a minus here. And right, now you see, this is now an equation which tells me what lambda is in terms of mu. Huh? Okay, and this is now a, a linear equation. Huh? So I mean, uh, I have avoided of solving my quadratic equations having square roots and then doing things and getting rid of the square roots again in the end. Huh? Just by doing some manipulations on the level of, of the equation such that in the end I get a, a linear equation for, for lambda. Huh? This is not quadratic anymore, this is now linear. Huh? So this, I mean of course this here, this is just uh, uh, mu by mu. So this here is just uh, minus 1 divided by mu. Huh? Okay, and then I can just take the inverse of this. So this guy here is then just minus mu. So this means uh, this 1 minus lambda plus gamma 1 plus mu divided by mu. This is the inverse of this, which is minus mu. Or if I solve it for lambda, this means lambda. I bring this on the other side, and then I have here 1 plus this mu comes on this side as a plus mu. And I have this plus gamma 1 plus mu divided by mu. Huh? And that's it. Huh? That's really what, what I claimed there. Hmm? OK. So I mean. You can say, in principle, I was more or less done when I arrived at this point that I just had to solve the equation because I know what S of lambda is, but this is just maybe a, a nice way of, of solving this equation. No? Okay, but, but of course you, you get this. And of course you have to think about that uh, if mu is bigger than this square root of gamma, that this really is a lambda which is bigger than uh, this gamma plus. No? So this is really lying where it is supposed to lie. No? And if the mu is smaller, then you don't have a solution which is bigger. Uh, of, of course, you still have a solution here, but this is not outside the support of the Marchenko pasteur distribution, so this is not the pike uh, we, you're going to see. Uh. I mean, all, all the arguments which we did in between were using the fact that lambda has to be outside the support. Uh, okay, so and if we find a solution here in the end, that's really an eigenvalue of our original problem. Uh, good, uh, okay, so that's maybe what I wanted to say about this. Uh, so this is the end the proof here. Yeah, so questions? I mean, this is also the end of this chapter on the spiked model. <laughs>